All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to a new Musician on MMA. I'm your host, John from Medicine Hat. So, this is the UFC 239 pay-per-view card. Oh my gosh, I mean, I've I, I've said this on almost every uh, every Musician on MMA that, man, this card's stacked, or, oh my gosh, look at these, look at all these great fights, but... These summer cards that UFC has been putting together, oh my god. Insane. Insane. Um, now, I usually don't do this. I haven't done it lately, but we do have some really good prelim people, uh, prelim fighters. People like uh, Sean O'Malley is on the prelim. That just tells you how stacked this card is. Uh, Gilbert Melendez, we haven't seen him in a little while. And uh, Claudia Gadelia. We haven't seen some of these fighters in a while, so this is... Even the prelims look really nice. Um, so uh, let's get right into it. Uh, this is going to be uh, on Saturday, July 6th. It's going to be at T-Mobile in Vegas. Um, gosh, so the the first pre... Or, excuse me, gosh. The first matchup on the main card is uh, Diego, yes, Sanchez, and Michael Chiesa. Um, I think this is a great matchup for... Uh, for both of these guys, Sanchez, he's a, he's coming in. He's a brawler. Uh, he likes to grapple a lot. And then Chiesa, he's no joke either with the, uh, with the hands and the, uh, the grappling as well. So this should be a great matchup. Um, I think with Sanchez, you know, he's going to come in storming. He looked great against Gaul. Um, and then with Chiesa, you know, he's ready to go too. Um, I would be surprised if this went three rounds and if it does, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty violent. Um, gosh, it's hard to say because I, I didn't think Sanchez was going to beat Mickey Gall. Um, and Chiesa's no joke. Uh, oh, man, this is tough. This is tough. Starting out with the tough the tough fights. Um, you know what? I like Sanchez. He comes in with, with so much of a uh, positive attitude, and he is always coming into the octagon just crazy hyped up. I like Sanchez for this. I think it's going to be close. Um, but I, I think Sanchez might be able to catch Kesa and something. Or it'll go three and he'll be able to get decision. Uh, so I like Sanchez. Let's see what the odds are for this fight. Um, it's close. They have uh, Vegas has Kesa at uh, minus 240 and Sanchez at plus 190. So that's a pretty close, that's a pretty close number for the odd uh, differential. So... So, uh, you know, even though Vegas likes Kesa, it might be because of his, uh, his youth or something, but man, I, I, I do like Sanchez for this for sure. And that's in the welterweight division. A little coffee sip there. And, uh, yeah, this next matchup is pretty cool too. I actually like how, uh, uh, Rockhold's coming up a uh, weight class. So we have Luke Rockhold and Jan Blockowitz. um, this is interesting because Luke is usually in, I believe, the middleweight. Let's double check that. That always confuses me, those weight classes in between there. Um, yeah, middleweight. And he was champion there. So we'll see what he can do leveling up here with the uh, with the, the bigger boys at, uh, at light heavy. Um, we'll have to see, too, how his cardio is. Whenever you see a fighter coming into a higher division, you wonder if he can hold the weight. He or she can hold the weight if, if it is a, a woman fighter going into a heavier weight as well. Um, I'm going to pull for Blockowitz in this, mainly because he has been light heavy. And I think when you go into a higher division or if you go into a lower division, we just saw Dillashaw uh, go after Cejudo. Not just saw this, but a couple months back. And uh, you just see the stress that... Uh, that the weight cut does when they're going, when fighters are going down a class, it's just a different fight. So I like Blockowitz in this one. I think it'll be another close one. It may go three rounds, but I think with Rockhold, you know, that's a lot of weight. That's a lot more weight to carry. He's coming up from, uh, from 185 to 205, you know, in between there essentially. Um, and in my opinion, that's going to be a huge difference. Uh, Rockhold, 
you know, his chin against Bisbing, his chin against uh, uh, Yoel Romero. Um, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to weigh that in to to Jan's power, and he's in light heavyweight. You know, we're not dealing with middleweight guys, and middleweight guys have crazy power. So think about light heavy. That's gonna be more weight behind those punches. And uh, you're going to have to have a really good chin to be in that division. I think with Rockhold, I think he's going to get knocked out in this. Um, But who knows? He he definitely could surprise me at being a higher weight. I think the big thing he has to make sure of, Rockhold's chin. And then his his cardio and movement. You wonder how they train uh, when he's moving up uh, a a little bit of weight. Um, But I like Blockowitz. Let's see the odds here. Odds have uh, actually it's a uh, some some of the the betting odds have it for Luke barely, and then uh, one of them has a uh, one of them has a pick 'em push bet that they're both uh, negative one twenty five for Rockhold and negative one hundred five for Blockowitz. Um, so these are close. You know, if they're giving it to Rockhold, it is barely there, barely there. Um, but I'm going to pull for Blockowitz mainly because of the weight that Rockhold's putting on. And I haven't seen his chin hold up even in uh, when he was middleweight. So that's a danger for me. I think, uh, I think Rockhold's chin is at risk here. Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to pull for Blockowitz. For shout. Um yeah, and then next up, we have welterweight division with uh, Jorge Masvidal and Ben Askren. This is a great matchup, too. We have Masvidal, who's more of the street fighter guy. You know, he's coming in, doing, you know, more of the uh, world star hip-hop video kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, obviously a brawler. He had a great knockout against Till. That was actually a really scary knockout, if you guys missed that. Um, Till, gosh, knowing him, too, he's a he's a brawler. And it took him a couple minutes to get up. So that was kind of a scary knockout. But nonetheless, Masvidal looked great in that fight. And then Ben Askren, you know, he's the wrestler. He's been the one championship uh, belt holder before coming into the UFC. And uh, that Lawler fight had some controversy. I'll admit that. But um, he definitely showed why he's in the UFC. He can pull off these these different takedowns and submission uh, attempts. And uh, I think that's going to be the big thing for Masvidal to watch out for is, is Askren going to go for these crazy takedowns? If he does, can he match, match up the timing to maybe knee him when he's going down for a takedown or maybe go for something, uh, go for a big punch when he's trying to do it. We'll see what happens. Um, If you guys watch enough UFC, you're going to see, uh, this matchup uh, be pretty interesting. Um, with Masvidal, he is the striker, and with Asker, and he is the wrestler. So, and obviously, both guys have have all the all the um, all the talent um, with the martial arts. But I think the big thing for Masvidal is, hey, if Askren's taking you down for two or three rounds, is he going to have the cardio to get back up and? kick his ass. I don't know. I don't think so. So I think with Askren, I think he's going to take this one. I think it'll be close. Um, but merely based on his experience in wrestling and the way he can dominate a fight. Now he has been tagged in fights and still been able to, to, uh, take over the fight. I saw a, uh, I remember I was, previewing a uh one championship fight he did a couple years back and he was getting tagged but he was still able to dominate the fight and get the win and i think that even went five rounds i think he was holding a belt at the time in uh in one championship so i like Askren in this matchup i think um i think there's going to be chances for masvidal to tag him but i think Askren, just like a lot of other fighters they can stick to their wrestling when they do feel that their chin is going to get, uh, is going to get, um, oh, what's the word compromised. <laughs> uh, thank you. Dictionary.com. Um, I think if, if Askren thinks his chin is compromised and he needs to go down for a, for a double leg 
any kind of takedown technique, he's going to get it and he can ride out that, uh, that situation. Um, and let's see what the numbers are for this fight. Vegas likes Askren all across the board. Um, negative 200 to Masvidal's plus 150. So it's another close bet. Um, similar to the uh, Chiesa Sanchez and also to the Rockhold Blockowitz. But but I, I, I do want to stick with my boy uh, Funky Ben because I think when you have your basic... Um, when you have your techniques down on a level like he has when it comes to wrestling, whatever happens in the octagon, you can go right back to that and you can dominate the fight. So that should be an interesting fight too, man. All these all these fights are uh, are terrific matchups. Um, and then we have uh, Amanda Nunes and Holly Holm, and that's the uh, women bantamweight division. And uh, Nunes has the belt. Holm is the challenger. Gosh, we've seen we've seen some crazy fights in this division. Um, Nunez, she defeated uh, Cyborg Holm. We all know her. She beat Rousey, um, and she's she's uh, faced Cyborg, and that was actually a pretty impressive fight. She took five rounds with uh, Cyborg, which most women, you know, we looked at like. Uh, Lately, like Megan Anderson, it didn't take very long for Cyborg to to TKO her. And I think the big thing with Holm, she needs to move. Nunez, um, she has heavy hands. So does Holm, you know, boxing champion. Holm has those crazy kicks. Um, I think with Nunez, um, you know, it is going to be a five rounder. So she needs to keep her cardio levels up. And Holly Holmes gonna, you know, need to use her, uh, use just her movement, her good cardio, her good hands, her speed. Um, I think that's the only way she's gonna be able to beat Nunez. And man, in my opinion, unless she gets something in there quick, I think it might go to five. So I think for both both ladies, it's gonna be, um, I think it's gonna be a cardio battle for sure. Both women love to throw big punches. Holm, you know, also has the kicks. Nunez has, you know, every technique in the bag also. I'm going to go with Nunez, probably in decision. I really don't see uh, either of them getting knocked out. Uh, they both have great chins. And Holm, gosh, especially going five with Cyborg, that was huge. And Nunez beating Cyborg was big as well. Um, and then Vegas has Nunez. And... It's mm, it's a close-ish betting line, uh, minus three forty-five to Nunez and plus two fifty-eight for Holm. So it's not as close as the uh, as the last fight that I just talked about, but you know it's definitely definitely not crazy margins when it comes to the numbers. But I like that fight too. I think that's going to be a terrific fight. And then the main event uh, at light heavyweight. This is John Jones versus Tiago Santos. And gosh, I think, I think, um, since probably the DC Jones, um, this is Jones's best, uh, matchup for sure. Um, what was Jones's last match? Anthony Smith, I believe. So, you know, I, I didn't think that was going to be hard for him. Um, Smith is a great fighter, but I think at that level, you know, you gotta, it's John Jones guys, you know, love him or hate him out of the octagon. It's John Jones. You know, he's, he's. He's obviously, in my opinion, our current goat. Um, and obviously he loves to play the heel, you know, being kind of the bad guy, uh, being, you know, playing the bad boy out of the octagon. Um, but uh, I think, you know, Santos, man, if he can get inside, which is dangerous with John Jones, but, you know, he, he's got some heavy hands. He has great knockout potential. He's had some great knockouts in the past. Um and I think that's the one thing we haven't seen with Jones. I mean, no one's really gotten inside with him because he's just so lengthy. Uh, let's look at the reach here. Gosh, I mean, that's huge. That's eight and a half inches for uh, for the reach differential. That's crazy. So, I mean, the big thing is, you know, both guys are, are around the same height. So that, that could be something. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, that's really where John Jones, not only with technique and work ethic, but... 
you know, with, with, with Jones, it's gosh, that's even with Santos. I thought the reach would have been at least uh, a little better. I mean, that's, that's ridiculous. So, um, so with, with this fight, like I said a second ago, I think Tiago's going to have to get in there. He's going to have to get inside with Jones, which is we've seen with people like DC. That's, you know, that's a death wish. Um, but I, I do think it's just like Anthony Smith. I think it's a long shot. Excuse me. I think it's a long shot for Santos Santos to get the uh, to get the belt away from Jones and to get a to get a win out of him. Um. So I like Jones. Um, and then the numbers are uh, Vegas odds are just like the Smith fight are crazy. Um, John Jones minus nine hundred to Santos is plus 545. So, um, not as big as the Anthony Smith fight. I believe, I believe the Anthony Smith fight was negative 1200, something ridiculous like that for the line for the betting lines. Um, but this is another big underdog for Santos. If he can get inside, who knows? We really haven't seen Jones get challenged since, since the first, um, since the first, uh, who am I thinking of? My boy from uh, Sweden, um, Gustafsson. Since Gustafsson, the first fight, we haven't seen we haven't seen Jones's chin get challenged, or really anybody go inside go uh, on the inside with Jones. Um, so my thing is, Santos is going to push it. He's going to go five hard rounds, hard cardio, uh, going in, going in, going in. Because Jones can be on the outside of somebody all, all fight, and uh, and still be able to tag the the fighters. So, I like Jones on this one. Vegas likes Jones. This is gonna be a great card for uh, for Fourth uh, of July week. Um, uh, I hope everybody has a incredibly fun and incredibly safe July Fourth, and uh, hope everybody can catch this this. Uh, this pay-per-view, it's going to be a solid one. And, uh, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for listening in to the podcast. I know I've been a little inconsistent with uploads, um, in the past, uh, you know, a couple months or so, just been kind of switching up what, what I'm, what I'm up to and what I'm doing when it comes to YouTube and different things like that. But, um, just want to, just want to thank everybody for sticking around with this podcast. Uh, This has been another episode of Musician on MMA. I've been your host, John Vi, and stay cool out there.